Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We had a customer bring us their Jurassic Park Data East pinball machine um, that they say has some issues. I have no clue really what is messed up with it. I believe they said that the uh, it just stopped working one day and also that the T-Rex doesn't work right. So that should be fun to fix and film a video of for you, our lovely YouTube subscribers and viewers and followers. So, I figured I would look it out, look it up, or check it out, take it apart, whatever you say. And I need to, uh, I need to see if there's anything I need to order for it. I've got an order I was about to place with a uh, pinball company. And uh, I figured if we needed anything for this, maybe I'd order it at the same time so we'd get a little jump start on repairing it. So we've got a bunch of stuff in the shop right now. This one's back here in the back. But it looks like it's in pretty nice shape. And i got to tell you, I've mentioned it on other videos. These, like the Data East era, that type of machine, the Gottlieb System 3 stuff, I love that stuff. That's like kind of the last ones that I was really into at all. Um, We've had a bunch of good games since then, of course, but I don't really play them very much. So this thing is in exceptionally nice shape, it looks like to me. Maybe the paint's been touched up or something, but it just looks really nice. Um, so we're going to check it out. Yeah, I don't know, has that, been, has that been redone or something? Look how nice that looks. Usually there's wear and stuff all over them. This is a really nice shape. If it's been repainted, I can't tell. <laughs> I mean, I don't see... Do you see where it's been touched up? I think that's just the original finish, and it's just excellent. Okay, so they've got a nice little machine here. Jurassic Park. Built in Chicago, baby. All right, um, very cool. Let's see if the other side looks the same. Yeah, that's very nice. Joey left me a note. Details. You know, I mean, he can't, he can't, he can't help himself. It's going to his head, people. All right, so I haven't watched this movie in a while. I watched it a few years ago. I went back and watched them all again. So I don't remember all the little inside stories, but it looks like it's just completely based on the movie. Recognize some of the characters. Um, so the play field itself looks complete to me. I have never played this game, and I've never worked on one. I've had people ask us before, you know, uh, a lot of times we'll get people, they'll bring us a game um, because they saw that we could fix it by watching another video. We can fix about any of them. They're all very similar. So although I've never worked on this one, we ought to be able to get her going. That T-Rex will be interesting. I know it moves left or right, up and down, and I think it eats the ball. That lands in there. So that'll be interesting. Should be able to figure that out. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take the glass out and let's pop the play field up and just see if anything got knocked around in shipping. Uh, we did a stern monopoly not too long ago where the ballast of the or the yeah, the ballast of the uh, lamp in the back had fallen down and hit the board and all this. So you just gotta watch for stuff like that. Whenever whenever they're moved. Even if people are very careful, you're not careful when it's driving down the road. It's back there, boop, 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 low riding, you know, so who knows what happened on the way from there to here. We haven't plugged it in or anything. Yeah, so let me pull out the glass, we'll pop up the play field and see what it looks like underneath. Okay, now, on these, they have this little mech here. It's not a mech, it's a gimmick, it's the best word for it. They got this little gimmick here. Um, Safety strap attached to play field in upright position using eye bolts. So you take this little rubber strap here that's attached to the bottom of the play field of the cabinet, and there's a little hook on the bottom of the play field, and you stretch it out and you grab it, and that basically keeps this thing from falling and whacking you a good one. The pinballs might still fall out. Um, 
but it'll keep from banging your head. There's an old book uh, that some hippie wrote called like How to Repair Volkswagen Bugs or something like that, or the Volkswagen Re Bug Repair Bi Bible or something. And there's a part in there where he, he's talking about uh, working on the engine, and he says to prop the hood up with a with a stick so it doesn't fall down and bang you a good one. Words to live by, people. This thing has six pinballs in it, it says. Wow. Holy crap. Okay, so uh, what do we got going on here? It looks pretty good. I don't see anything crazy. There is their flipper board to make the flippers work. Are there three flippers on this one? I was going to look on the top, but you know, you could just look on the bottom too. There are three flippers. A little fuse board over here for something or the other. Oh, it's got a shaker motor. Oh, fancy fied. All right, we got some paperwork here. A lot of bulbs. A quarter. Some various screws and stuff where they were trying to put some stuff back together. All right, so yeah, everything looks really cool. So underneath the play field, it looks like there were six balls installed because there's five there now and one fell out and hit me on the foot. Uh, boy, the coil, the flipper coils always look weird on these Data East ones. <laughs> Everything looks good though there. Let's look. Uh, the kickers look good. This up kicker here. Popper. Ball popper. A bunch of this stuff might be out of place or something. You know? That's so crazy how they started using like ABS plastic for the parts. But you know, really, the um, the drop targets were always like that, and like on the old Williams stuff, they uh, they use some plastic like that too. There's a trough. I gotta say, the thing looks pretty clean actually from underneath. Um, and then over here is what I wanted to see. There are two motors that run the T-Rex. I thought there may be like some broken wires or something. There's some switches involved in it. And that could be the problem. So I wanted to look at it first and see if it looked like we were going to need a new motor or anything. But it looks pretty good to me. I think there's also a coil like inside the thing. There's a switch there that it's hitting right now. Switch there. Switch there. Switch there and a switch there. Everything looks complete to me and the switches are at least clicking. So uh all right, so let me put this back down and then let's look in the back box and see what kind of condition everything's in in there. Pretty cool. All right, let's see what she looks like. Hope for the best, people. Hope for the best. So here's the soundboard. This is just like the one in Hook or a similar one to the one in Hook. If you, if you saw, uh, we worked on one of those a while back. Uh, this is the, what do they call it? The PPB board? Is that what they call it? I think that's what they call it. The PPB board. It basically is where they put all of the high voltage. Except for the power supply. <laughs> There's the power supply. Everything looks good. Sometimes on these, you see burnt up general illumination connectors but not on this and then the main board 
um, and the batteries. No problems yet. Doesn't look like. But we're going to get those out of there. I think what I'll do is I'll test those batteries. What do you think? Let's see what they what they measure out at at the moment. And then uh, we may be able to put an NVRAM solution. Would it go right now? believe it would. So I think if I take that chip out and put an NVRAM in, that would make it where they never need batteries again. But they'll need an NVRAM chip 40 years from now or something like that. <laughs> I don't see anything fried. Who knows what kind of problems it's got. So this would be the lamp section. Very similar to how Williams did their lamps. Uh, the system three through six, the old school stuff. This would be the solenoid section. You know. That's cr this is crazy, because this looks just like the, the Williams System 3 through 6 lamp driver board, 337. Uh, this is probably special solenoids. Pop bumper stuff like that, the stuff that gets triggered really quickly. What are these chips here? Let's see what these are. Steel 6821s. Very cool. So I have uh, I have experience with those. So those are on the Bally's and the Williams. Older games. This is a little newer than I usually work on. So my theory is when the game stopped working, it's because it's in a service mode because the batteries are dead. I'm hoping the display is not dead. The T-Rex I don't think will be too big of a deal. But we need to see if that display is going to be alright and if it's just a service mode thing. But not, I just wanted to look and make sure nothing was knocked out of place before we plugged it in. Okay, But just, for, just to humor myself, I'm going to go get a multimeter and measure the voltage out of those batteries and see if, if those batteries are dead then that would explain it. Hmm. Actually, it's got 4.2 volts, which is probably enough to run the uh, uh, the settings and the CMOS or whatever they call that, CMOS. So that's probably fine. So there's something else going on with it. Okay, we're ready to plug it up and just see what happens. All right, so we're going to turn it on. Now it might scream. It might be really loud. Or it might not do anything. Here we go. Oh, shaker motor time. Whoa. What in the world? Let's try that again. All right, so that's an old school power supply problem in my opinion. It's a voltage missing that need that it needs for something. We'll try it one more time. Yeah, it's very dead. Okay, so we need to check. Uh, we need to check voltages. It's weird that the shaker motor worked like that. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's check some voltages. Okay, so when it comes on, the plus five light comes on as if it's got five volts, but you've really only got. 1.5 volts So that's our problem without 5 volts this thing's never going to boot You know 5 volts is very important on any uh, Pinball machine or arcade game because all of the chips Run off of 5 volts so our problem is going to be either bad solder joints on the back of this board or issues on that power supply Probably time to rebuild that power supply. So let me pull it out and uh, we'll get a good look at the back of it. I don't know, it looks pretty good. Let's get a closer look, shall we? We're looking for a cold solder joint. 
that might explain half the voltage being gone. You know, when I think half the voltage is gone, though, boy, that sure screams bridge rectifier to me. But was it half? I think it was like 1.6 or something, wasn't it? So that's not really half. Sometimes if it's like exactly half, it's because there's a bridge rectifier somewhere screwed up and only one leg of the AC voltage is getting through and so it comes out as half. I don't know, those solder joints look pretty decent. There at least. I don't know which connector does the five. But I think we might be looking at it right now. I think this is actually the uh, general illumination, I believe. Uh, I mean, they're borderline. I don't know. Sometimes you can't tell till you heat it up. So I will reflow the solder on all those, and we'll see if any of them fall apart while I do that. All right, so I just had a couple crazy things happen. The fuse holders are falling apart on the thing. And then this one did the same thing. All right. So I'm going to check the next one and see if it does the same thing. I was checking the fuses to see if they're good. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. They're just falling apart. Yeah, this side collapsed on that one. Look at that. So let's try this one. Yeah. Holy crap. I have never seen that. Holy moly! Okay, so I think we need to figure out which one is the uh, which one is the five volt fuse, <laughs> and that is probably our problem. The freaking fuse holders fell apart. That's bananas! Don't give up the fight, though, people. All right, so there is actually no five volt fuse on the output. It's on the input, and it's these two. And they're both fine. Hmm. Uh, there were two blown fuses, though. These bottom two were blown, which are the solenoids. So that would explain the uh, the T-Rex not moving, but it probably would have killed about half the other stuff in the game, too, which a lot of times people will bring us games and they won't even realize that half the stuff's not working. If it kicks the ball out and they can shoot a little bit, they think the game's working. But a lot of times, like, half the stuff's not working. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is replace the fuse clips, and I'll test those a bit to make sure they're nice and solid, and they're not about to do the same thing. Um, and then once we get that and get the fuses back in, we'll check some stuff and see if we can find anything shorted. All right, so I replaced all of the fuse holders, but I want to show you something. I'm going through and I'm replacing the um, capacitors. Look how filthy the soldering iron has gotten. I'm replacing the capacitors, and you hear that? So that's uh, a hissing sound. What would be hissing? It's leaking capacitors. That's what's hissing. So these things start leaking, and it causes all kinds of problems. And then whenever you... I can smell it right now. There's like a smell to that crap burning. Um, and when you, when you heat them up, sometimes... They don't always do it, but sometimes they'll do like that. It sounds like something boiling or something. It's it's because the the juice has leaked out of the cap, and you're burning, you're boiling it basically. So uh, that's probably our problem. So I'm replacing the capacitors in the five volt section. That's probably a problem. Look at that. So obviously that's not working worth a darn, worth a darn. Okay, I'm going to figure out which cap this is and we'll look at it on the schematic and see if that cap had just completely dieted it. What would that do to the power supply? Okay, so here's the schematics. C uh, pin 10 and pin 11. So that's voltage coming in to this bridge rectifier. 
that's one AC lead and that's the other AC lead. And then out of that is created a DC voltage, which uh, is connected to ground and then goes off this way somewhere. So it's the line over the top of that chip. And then, but if you look, one of those AC lines goes through that cap that was all screwed up. That cap was so screwed up, I doubt it was working. Or it, it may have been barely working. You know, I mean, it probably wasn't make it letting that much juice through. Now, people, I could use the technology, the 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 technically correct words if I knew them. But you know. Part of the reason people don't like don't watch boring electronics videos is because the people that do it, they talk in like a different language. See, I'm talking in English. This is redneck ease. The voltage comes through here. It's AC voltage. It goes through two fuses, right? Then it goes to a bridge rectifier, which does some stuff. But if you take that out of the equation, one of those AC voltages goes through this cap. The cap has water in it. The water had all leaked out. It's called an electrolyte, but it's like water. You know how you drink that uh, that that expensive water that you get at the hippie grocery store and it says, with electrolytes? That's what they're talking about. So the electrolytes had leaked out. So this cap, it wasn't doing what it's supposed to do. This thing is like a, uh, it's like a, uh, it's like uh, licking a 9-volt battery with your tongue, right? It, it, it stores up the juice and makes it worse because of the water in it. If you touch a 9-volt battery to your skin, it's not that bad. But if you lick it, it's real bad. So this is what was going on here. This is supposed to lick it, but it's dry. So it's like you're using the 9-volt battery with no lickage. So the voltage isn't getting through very good. And then it's going through these two diodes. Well, anytime you got two diodes beside each other, that's basically changing it into the DC. So the voltage is going through there. And then, see, if it, it can't go through there because of that little line. That stops it. That says stop in the name of love. So the voltage can't go that way. But it can go that way. See the arrow? It lets the voltage go that way. It's like whenever they were uh, telling all of us we can't leave our house because you can't breathe the air. But if you snuck out to the grocery store and they had arrows pointing down some aisles and you could walk that way down the aisle and not get cooties. But if you walk, if you walk the wrong way, like towards there, you got, you got uh, syphilis or something. Okay? So you got to go that way, like at the grocery store. Stay six feet apart. And then when you get that way, see how they have this side connected to the ground and that side connected to a capacitor, I mean a positive of a capacitor? That's helping make it DC somehow. And then the DC voltage goes into pins 11 and 12. Okay, now, that chip, if you go on down to the next, the next line, IC 1723, that's a voltage regulator. So what's it doing? Well, you got to look it up. So you look up IC 1723, and you come up with this. It's a voltage regulator. And if you look, voltage in comes in at on pins 11 and 12. So what's going on with our voltage in? It's all screwed up because the, 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 the electrolyte uh, leaked out of the capacitor. So we're screwed up from the very start, right? This is all messed up. So it's going to get too little in, which means it won't get enough out. See, it says voltage out over here. So this chip turns the power into whatever voltage you want it to be. It's a voltage regulator. Regulate it down to a certain voltage. And then it comes out pins two and 10 and 2 and goes on. Now, if you go back up on this one, here we go. Here it is coming out 10 and 2. They're using this 2N6057 there. And see, it all goes and goes, bleh, bleh, bleh. Well, there's the ground, bleh, bleh, bleh. So the output must be right here. Five volts, baby. Whoop, there it went. It didn't work, though, right? Our five was too low. So why was our five too low? It's because the voltage going into that chip was probably too low because that one freaking capacitor. But to be honest with you, this capacitor was leaking like a rock, too. So if this one was leaking, that's the filter capacitor on the five volts. So that one was leaking, and that other one was leaking. The other two in that circuit weren't leaking at all. So I think that's going to fix it. I think our, our five's going to be rock steady. So I think we're ready to put it back in. So I replaced the capacitors. I reflowed all the connectors. Um, and then the, the bad fuse clips I replaced, but they had nothing to do with the five volts. The other two uh, fuses that do have to do with five volts, those are real strong, and they feel fine. So I'm not going to replace them. 
Now, all right, folks, I have installed it back in. What do you think? I'm hoping that's it. Put you back where you were. <laughs> Hopefully the shaker motor won't get you again. Ooh, that was scary. Now, it may be uh, real loud or something if it comes on. Voila! Voila, people! Free play. It's on free play. Let's see here. Uh, about, uh, perhaps, perhaps we may do something supposedly like this. Audits and adjustments. Uh, probably. I went in the wrong one. Our attractions will drive kids out of their minds. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay, it said testing T-Rex diagnostics, but he did not move. Diagnostics, baby. Okay, it's telling us all the switches that don't work. Or maybe all the ones that are stuck. Easy trough clear. Burn in times. Speaker test. There's the display test. I was worrying about that. You know, displays are very expensive. That one looks pretty good. Now, you may be wondering why I'm saying I'm wondering about it, why I'm worrying about it if it's not my machine. Because I'm a decent human being, that's why. T-Rex test trigger operates the jaw coil. Oh, really? Oh! Oh! <laughs> How do I move them? Oh, my lord! Oh my lord, you hit the flipper and he moves. There's the center switch. Center switch is off. Left switch. Let's see if we can get the right switch to work. So there's something he won't go past. So he's all the way to the left. He's in the center. I can't get him to go to the right. I wonder how you go up and down. That's up. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with him except for maybe the right switch. Oh, did the top switch work? What about the top switch? Yes. Bottom switch? Bottom switch is not working. Okay, so the right switch and the bottom switch. But since it's on, see, that says center switch. Um, he won't move it to the right anymore. So there's something going on there. He'll move to the left. He stops at the, where the center switch is. But I think he's supposed to keep going, I think. Yeah, so uh, we got some minor stuff there. That could be as easy as unplugging and replugging in switches. Okay, so I left it on for about half an hour and everything is still running. The power supply, the uh, on the MPU, we've got it's a little low. It's at 4.84. You'd like that to be a little closer to five, so we might have to revisit that. Sometimes if it gets a little low, what happens is whenever you start hitting like a lot of flippers and stuff the uh, power supply will drop a little bit and it'll make the game reset so we'll watch that um, we have to clean everything obviously and then you know it blew those solenoid fuses the bottom two how would it have done that well remember how when we turned it on and the shaker motor started that's controlled by a solenoid um, 
when you hit the flipper, by the way, that little kicker there kicks too when it's supposed to be moving him to the right. So I'm not sure if that's a problem or not. Um, I bet there's supposed to be some lights in there in the back too that are burn out. Uh, but whenever, so they said that it worked and then it didn't work. Okay, <laughs> obviously. But um, if you think about it, let's say that 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 capacitor hadn't leaked enough yet and it was still providing enough voltage to boot the board. Once the board starts getting where it's barely booting, it can't completely control everything. So you start having weird things happen. So it could have let a coil run away and lock on and and blow the fuse. So that's my theory, right? So I think what we'll do is we'll go back out into the test menu. Now I looked in the manual and they have a little thing in there where they talk about this. And they say that when the game boots up, if the dinosaur is not on the center switch or the dinosaur is not on the top switch, the game assumes that something is wrong and just turns the dinosaur off. Now if you looked, whenever it booted, it said T-Rex Diagnostics and then it said something and then it disappeared and said uh, push start. So I think what was going on was it probably wasn't on the... Uh, center switch. Now how would that happen? It could be a switch problem. Like we still may have a problem with the bottom switch and the right switch. We're going to watch that. Uh, but it could be that the uh, if the game was turned off while the dinosaur was moving. And they say that it moves during gameplay. So it could be that it was moving to the left. Um, I wonder if it always moves at the all the way up point though. I don't, I don't know. But it could be that it was moving to the left or something and it was off the center switch and then somebody turned the game off. Well then whenever you turned it back on, it would say, hey, it's not on any of the switches and just disable it. Kind of a weird way to do it, but I think out of, say, out of uh, it's just a precaution they were taking. So apparently the way that you get it going again is you go in and move it manually like we just did till the center switch is on and then turn it off and back on and uh, it works. Let's see if that's true. So we'll turn the game off. It's sitting on the center switch. Theoretically, when it comes on, it should do its diagnostics and he'll move around and do his thing. He went up, left. I don't know that he can go right. He didn't go up and down. So there's, there's a problem where he's not going right. I think he's supposed to go just as far to the right and then back to the center. So he, he's supposed to go left and then right and then back to the center. Then he's supposed to go down, grab the ball and go up and hit the switch. So we've got some issues there. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to work on that. But let's see if this thing will play. Chomp, chomp. Welcome to Jurassic of the Park. I think we got some coils not working again. Oh, there's the shaker. I'm trying. She won't kick. Hey, he is moving. A little bit. Meh. No! <laughs> Look at this. It should do that. Not that. Don't do the left one. I mean, don't do the right one. Yeah, so we got a lot more problems than we than we thought. We've got blown fuses everywhere is what it seems like. I mean, the coil down there is working. He moved a little bit. 
kicking more balls out. are working. It looks like a bunch of lights aren't working. are working. Cool. Both slings are working. Uh, we got an up, up, up kicker here. How do we get to that? How's that supposed to happen? Still got some issues, folks. Our guy won't move to the right. Um, the down switch isn't working. This up kicker is not working. the auto the shooter's not working we got a bunch of stuff that needs adjustment and a whole bunch of the lights don't work okay so we're in switch test trough number four number five number six so that's saying there's three balls in the trough t-rex up the right slingshot and the right vertical up kicker so the right vertical up kicker is because we have three balls in there the right slingshot is probably just a switch that's adjusted too close. That's why it wasn't working, probably. Yeah. On these newer games, if the switch's connect is sh shorted, instead of just having the thing sit there and lock on, it'll turn it off. It'll say, oh, something must be wrong, and turn it off. Okay. I don't have my little adjuster here with me, but... Basically, that needs to be adjusted. Um, all right, so it's not a switch problem. It knows those balls are in the vertical up kicker. All lamps on. Eh. All lamps off. The lamps ain't on. Cycling the flashers, most of those appear to be working. Cycling the coils. We're cycling through the coils. I want to see the right vertical up kick didn't do anything.
All right, so obviously whatever that one is isn't working either. Okay, so we got coil problems, we got lamp problems, we got T-Rex problems, <laughs> um, we've got flipper problems. Other than that, this thing's about ready to go. All right, folks, so that's enough for now. We'll do another video where we work through all that stuff. I got to order some parts for it, and uh, we'll get back on it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below what you think so far. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Don't forget to check out my brother, Donnie. He has his own channel here on YouTube. We do arcade game, pinball, jukebox repair. My brother, Donnie, does old vehicles, old buildings, and he has a farm with cows and goats. So I'm... Huh. I'm over there with him on his channel a lot. Go check it out. Hey, look. He's Buck. Oh, it's the wrong movie. That is what, that's not the right movie. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'm getting scared. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.